Let's take a look inside a hot pink lady's muff. A neck muff, to be precise, and not just the ladies. You could wear it if you're a man, although you might not want to use a pink one. You may wish to choose another colour. Uh, noting that in some countries, pink is a perfectly acceptable colour for men. I'm going to use this pink power bank, which seems appropriate, because you stuff your own power bank into the little pocket here, and by the power of gravity, it stays put. Uh, and then you press this button on the front, and I'll shield it when I press this. And you hold it for a second, and it lights up red. That is it at its high power setting. Press it again. It goes blue. That's at the medium power setting. And you press it again, and it goes green. And that is the low power setting. And at this point in time, the central area of this muff is actually heating up. The way it's supposed to be worn is that you wrap it around your neck, and then it passes through itself like this. And that kind of holds itself in place. Now, if I connect a... Uh, USB meter here and I plug it in we can see when I activate this and I'll zoom down in this just so we can see we can see that when I power it up I'm pushing the button it comes in about 800 milliamps it depends on the power bank it depends on the voltage because it's just a fixed resistance but that is running on a 100% duty cycle if I press the button again it starts cutting in and out and it goes down to a 75% duty cycle. Press it again, and it goes down to, let me look at the instructions here, at 60% duty cycle. So roughly half the time on and half the time off. And that seems to be how it regulates the heat in this unit. Okay. Now, the listing had very weird information. If we, I zoom out and we take a look at this, it describes it as really deep relief correspond pain part um, negative ions surround the body that doesn't produce negative ions far infrared heat penetrates deep into the body it, it's kind of radiated heat i suppose long enough carbon fibers are densely distributed evenly which makes sure each unit has more energy that's kind of debatable and 0.4 pounds of tourmaline beads are evenly distributed suggesting it's weighted it is not weighted it's just full of fleecy material Let's open it up, because I think this little module here would be quite useful. And we can also see what it's using as the uh, the heat source, which you can kind of guess what it's using as a heat source. The tourmaline beads have, uh, have been sacrificed in favour of standard polyester fibre here. I ain't going to have to, I'm going to have to basically get a pair of scissors and cut into this. There was another picture as part of the listing which showed uh, a radiation symbol, which was a bit disturbing. Um, I did check out the Geiger counter and there is no radiation. That is a very tough, fibrous material. So uh, get in like this. In like Flynn, as some would say. It turns out I thought that was a, a reference to the film um, Tron, Flynn's Arcade, but apparently it's not. It's apparently Errol Flynn getting in strange enough to ladies apparently so what we have here hmm, right this looks as though it is stitched on tell you what i'm going to i'm going to get a seam stripper and remove the stitching and we'll take a look inside this module i'm also while i'm here let's see if we can uh, find the heater pad in amongst this uh, fluff is the heater pad locked? And the heater pad is locked in place, unfortunately. So I may have to uh, start cutting things open. Tell you what, I shall pause while I do that. I'll go and get the seam stripper and then we'll uh, get that button off. We can take a close look at the circuitry. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore and we'll start with the clean side of the circuit board first because it was very hard to reverse engineer this owing to the fact that this had been potted in with silicon. They've got this little silicon uh, body here with a button on it, a little piece of uh, hard plastic in here just to give it a nice clickable surface. And then the circuit board, after having the wires put on it, is physically clipped in here. It's got a little recess it goes into and then uh, it's potted in a silicon compound and that means it's fairly washproof, and they are saying that this thing is washable. I'm not sure how wash it would be. But the USB connector does have a very, very tight-fitting cap that goes over it, so maybe it is water-resilient. 
However, let's zoom down just a little bit. And we've got uh, the clicky button in the middle. Very common clicky button, often found in remote controls and just about everything. It's one of the cheapest tactile surface mount buttons. And then we've got a very generous 12 LEDs for each of red, blue and green. Um, they are all just combed in parallel with one resistor for the whole lot. If we take a look at the other side of the circuit board, and this is where it gets a bit messy with the silicone, we have the connections here. We've got the two common positive. The uh, positive coming in from the USB goes straight out to the heater because it's the negative that is switched. But it also goes to a 100 ohm resistor and then to a diode. I thought this was a Zener initially, but just D1. I think it's a polarity protection diode and a capacitor, which then gives supply to the uh, microcontroller. In this event of the polarity being swapped, which I think this is for, the diode would just short that out and the resistor would sort of limit the current. They'd see it wasn't working and hopefully swap things at that point. There's a 510 ohm resistor going from that uh, positive rail out to the other side for all the LEDs. And we've got a 1K resistor down here feeding an A090 MOSFET. And that is it. There's very little. It's interesting to note they do have uh, test pads for all the uh, connections for factory testing. Let's take a look at the schematic. It's very straightforward. I shall zoom down just a tiny bit more. Oh, crazy zoom. Here's the USB coming on, and we have plus 5 volts. It goes straight to the heater, which is switched by that MOSFET, but it also goes to that 100 ohm resistor, and there's the polarity protection diode at this end. If the polarity was the wrong way around, it would just dump the 100 ohm resistor across 5 volts, which would be a fair amount of current, uh, and it would get quite hot, but it would probably survive for long enough to know that something was wrong. There's a decoupling capacitor, just basically to provide a little reservoir, just for stability of the microcontroller. And then there's a 510 ohm resistor feeding the positives of all the LEDs. Um, and then it's the ubiquitous microcontroller, the mystery microcontroller, which drives the MOSFET via a 1K resistor. There is the position on the circuit board for a pull-down resistor in here, a 10K pull-down resistor, but they've not actually implemented it. That would have gone from here down to the negative rail. The LEDs are switched. Only one uh, colour is lit at a time, so they can use just one resistor and they're all in parallel. So there's a, if each of these LEDs is four times that particular colour, and they're just switched to the negative rail via the microcontroller. The push button pulls one of the pins, which is normally held up high internally by a, a, what they call weak pull-up. Uh, it's pulled down by pressing the button. Um, and that is it, fundamentally. You click the button and put it into modes. It's all just little timing uh, stuff in the microcontroller for just basically stepping through the colours of LEDs depending on how many times you click the button and also cycling this MOSFET on and off uh, just to vary the heat. OK, let's take a look at the heating pad now. I shall zoom out a bit for this. The heating pad was on a sort of tyvek type material. And uh, the Tyvek material, I'm not sure why it, they've got a separate piece of the Tyvek material because this could have been sewn in, in its own. But zigzagged in here is a heating wire. And it's odd because it, it's actually the sewn in with the zigzagged sewing over the actual um, heater. And I'm guessing that means the whoever did this, was it done by a machine? Was it done by a human? The sewing machine itself is basically feeding out that heater wire as it zigzags the sewing over it. Let's see if I can find a pair of scissors and we'll cut into this because this is unfortunately kind of glued uh, together. There's two layers. And we'll see what sort of heater wire it is. If it is the carbon fibre promised by uh, the listing or is it perhaps... Uh, just a sort of like the tungsten type wire, the little resistance wire wrapped round a sort of core. We shall find out in due course, but this is glued together, which doesn't really help much, does it? Ugh. Yeah, that is glued. Oh, and you know what? Do you know what I can see already? I can see carbon fibre. It is carbon fibre. So what we've got here... Uh, 
that just looks like carbon fiber twisted strands. I don't know if you can actually hold on. Let's uh, get closer to this. And we'll focus on there. And is that going to actually show you that's just carbon fiber twisted strands? And there's a little crimp at the end going on to that carbon fiber. That is surprising. I wasn't expecting the carbon fiber, but I suppose that's a cheap material to use these days. Let's uh, focus down onto here. So, yeah, they must have a reel of the uh, carbon fiber material. I've just snapped the carbon fiber. Uh, they must have a reel of it. And it's also got a little extra thread to bind it together going round that by the look of it. Does it have an extra thread or am I just seeing something else? I'm going to have to have another look at it through the magnifying glass. I think there is an extra thread round that. Hard to tell if that's just a reflection of the carbon fibre or a thread. It could just be a reflection. Just a uh, pause momentarily. No, it looks as though it is actually interwoven. The carbon fibre is interwoven with another thread by the look of it. Just for strength, I presume. Not strong enough to stop me breaking it right enough. So that must be the the machine that does this, perhaps, uh, does just sew it on as it, with ordinary thread as it's actually feeding the carbon fibre thread out. But then they somehow crimp onto the end. I wonder if they just leave the, the ends up, cut, cut it to length, and then put the little crimps on with a little sploosh of silicone to hold it in place. But there we go. It's quite useful, I have to say, for this module. Just keep in mind it is well potted, so you're going to have to take a note of what the wires are um, before you remove it. Although, having said that, I can tell you what the wires are. Look in the back. With the wires at this end, we have... Well, actually, I'll show you it. I shall show you it here. We have the USB in. Uh, on these connections, the negative at the outer side, and then the two positives in the middle, and then the switched heater feed there. But, you know, it could be used for many other purposes, this, and it's not an expensive thing, the whole... Because it's a mass-produced item, this sort of heated thing... Let me just grab the, the shredded remnants of it. It is wrecked now. But because it's mass-produced, uh, that module is just a fairly generic thing, and uh, the AO9T could potentially switch a fair amount of current because it is a little decently specced MOSFET. So this could be quite interesting as a module just for, you know, having a 5 volt supply and just being able to actually um, choose three pulse within modulations, well, I suppose burst fired uh, ratios to uh, set a temperature or set general power dissipation to the load. Uh, it's worth mentioning if you set it up to the full load, and uh, after a certain amount of time, it will cut down to its second setting. It's a middle setting automatically, just presumably to stop stuff overheating and also to save the uh, life of the um, the power bank. But there we have it, the pink lady muff. It's quite interesting. It's a nice little bit of circuitry, very minimalist and totally functional.